Two seconds to go. Puts it up and scores at the buzzer. All of it is out of the field. He's another knockdown. You know, you know, Listening to the All Things Board Podcast with your hosts, Damian Banks and Pierre Banks on Speaker Radio. Fellas, you know what to do. What's happening? What's up? What's going on? It's the All Things Sport Podcast, and I'm Damian Banks. And of course, I'm Pierre Banks. Pierre, we're back. Another episode, another week of ATS, as I love to call it, the All Things Sport Podcast, where we give our listeners all things sport. Pierre, how's your week, man? How was last week? How's your week been going so far this week? I mean, I measure my weeks by sporting events, and this week is a little bit slow for me, actually, man. But the the NCAA title game got me over the hump. The Bo Sox started back going at it with the with the Indians. So now that I got the Bo Sox back, got something to to hang on to on a daily basis. But it's just been kind of slow, man. How about your way? Uh, around here, beautiful studios, Banks Boy Studios in Durham, North Carolina, man. Um, just been working, man, trying to work at the craft, uh, working on a documentary that I've been um, trying to produce for about a year um, for quarterback Vad Lee, former quarterback of James Madison University, looks to be getting drafted in the NFL this upcoming April. So that's what I've been doing pretty much this week, man. Checked out the national championship game uh, Monday night. We, we're going to get into that on the hot topics, man. Um, but just... You know, just trying to get better at what we do, man. Get better at this craft, man. Just try to give people all things sport and, and you know, in, in doing so, just working hard, man. Um, again, this is the All Things Sport Podcast. Thank you for listening to the listeners. You can go to banksboy.com if you want to download any of the old podcasts. Also, we have our YouTube channel link on there as well as our blogs. Again, go to banksboy.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports by Damien. And uh, you can also follow Pierre on Twitter. Pierre, I'll let the people know your Twitter handle, please, sir. At in my humble, that's in underscore my underscore humble. And Damien, I know that that this is a very trying time of year for you, man. It, you know the the Orioles are always awful. Uh, that's not true. I don't true. think they've been good since I've that's been not born. True. That's in nineteen hundred and eighty six. Uh, that's not that's definitely <laughs> so not I know, true. I know you um, hate this time yeah. of year, man. I know um, it, but you know, baseball season <laughs> is upon us. We'll be talking about, you know, talking about baseball more in our hot topics as well. We're going to give um, you hot topics. We're going to give you another top five on this week's episode. Also, for the listeners this week, man, we're going to debut a new segment on the All Things Sport podcast called The Real MVP. Uh, really excited about that one. And um, we're just going to give you what we always give you, which is podcasting brilliance, podcasting at its finest. I mean, no one does it better. Yes, sir. And... I'm pretty excited about the All Things Sport MVP. We, we give you breath for real where we highlight mistakes or bad judgment by uh, athletes throughout the world. The All Things Sport Real MVP is going to be a segment where we highlight some some pretty cool things that are going on out there in the sports world and, and some things where we can really give athletes and and anyone really involved in sports some props man and and bring out some some positive things that they are doing uh, throughout the sports world let's go ahead and jump into it the all things sport hot topic got to talk about the NCAA National Championship game the the final four took place you disrespected Villanova pretty good on the last podcast man what, what do you have to say for yourself King Jaffe um I don't think I disrespected Villanova I just oh you absolutely you know, didn't did. like I don't I didn't like any of their players so you know I, I didn't have a vested interest in watching them play 
I enjoy watching Buddy Hill play because I think he's a fantastic player. I definitely instill, you know, as we all know by now, Villanova did win the national championship 77 74 over the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. Shout out to Villanova. Great game, man. UNC led by five at halftime. Villanova came out after the halftime break, tightened up the defense, had a 10 point lead with about three minutes to go in the game. UNC senior Marcus Page just wouldn't let the Tar Heels die. Um, pretty much brought single-handedly brought Carolina back, you know, culminating in a crazy double pump three-point shot with about 4.7 seconds left to tie the game at 74. So we're all thinking the game's going to overtime. And um, what does the no-name Villanova Wildcats do? They just, you know, knock down a three-point basket as time expires. The first game-winning shot in NCAA championship game history since the Cardiac Pack did it in 1983. Villanova comes away with a 77-74 win. Interesting tidbit from that game. Um, UNC's junior guard, Nate Britt, his brother, adopted brother, Chris Jenkins, actually knocked down that three-pointer for Villanova as time expires. You can't write these things. You know, sports is so crazy, Pierre. You can't write stuff like that. You know, only in sports will a story come full circle like that, that Nate Britt's family adopted Chris Jenkins. They are pretty much brothers, not by blood, but they grew up together. Nate Jenkins, excuse me, Nate Britt plays for UNC. Chris Jenkins plays for Villanova. They play in a national championship game and Chris Jenkins has a pretty good game and knocks down the shot of his life will always have bragging rights in that household as Villanova knocks off the Tar Heels 77-74. And I'm glad that Villanova got the win because they deserved to get the win. No Carolina didn't have a, a great Second half, they didn't really have a great first half, but they outplayed the Wildcats in the first half. And then in the second half, they controlled the game. And it would have been a shame to have played that well, Villanova that is, and then have victory and a national championship nonetheless snatched from their grip by that wild double clutch three point shot by Marcus Page and so karma caught up to to the North Carolina Tar Heels Chris Jenkins comes down absolutely no pressure when he pulled up for three I mean caught that thing in rhythm took a couple steps not really a hand in his face and knocked down a shot just a a good basketball play Basketball one-on-one. You get the ball back to the guy who inbounds the ball. No one's really paying attention to him. He has all all the time in the world. They weren't down by any at that point. It was tied, so he knew at worst they were going to go to overtime. So he had absolutely no pressure. Stepped right into it and knocked it down. But North Carolina really shouldn't have been in the game the way they were. But that's college basketball. Teams are always going to be in the game because of so many things like turnovers, missed free throws, things you don't really see at the elite level in the NBA, man. And that's why, in my humble, the NBA game is so much better than college basketball. Is college basketball exciting? Yes. But it's only exciting because there's so many mistakes. I don't know what game you're watching. Only in the NBA can you be up by 25 points and still lose the game. Is that not exciting? You, I mean, how can you be up by 25 points and lose? You know how you can you know how you can be up by 25 points and lose by turning the ball over something you say that the elite players don't do by missing free throws, something you said the elite players don't do. That happens at all levels of basketball. Players miss free throws, teams turn the ball over. I mean, comebacks happen. I I'm not going to bash the college game and I love college basketball. I love the NBA. They're just two different games. The NBA is the NBA. There is a players league. You know, you you know, I don't follow teams in the NBA in the NBA per se. I follow players as opposed to you know the college basketball. I follow teams. You know, there is more of a team game. You know, I don't really follow teams in the NBA. I mean, I know who plays on certain teams, but I don't have a favorite team in the NBA. Anyone who knows me know I'm about that pack life. And getting back to the University of North Carolina Tar Heels, they experienced one of the greatest pack life. You know, that that is so pack life, losing the game like that, man. 
NC State loses games the way that UNC lost that national championship game, just to, to bring it back full circle. But I had to cut you off because you were about to bash the college game, and I can't let you do that, man. I can't let you do it. You didn't cut me off. I was done with my point. The NBA is a much better game than college basketball. You got to back that point up with some type of I just credibility, told you, man. Like, people are in the game in college basketball because turnovers, missed free throws, Miss coaching opportunities where you can keep your team in the game. It's no reason why the University of North Carolina should have been in the game that late. Villanova controlled the game the entire second half. They were up by seven with like four minutes to go. If they would have knocked down all their free throws, they would have played smart, not turned the ball over. They would have cruised to a national championship. They made it harder than it needed to be because that's the college game. A mistake riddled, a free throw missed riddled game. And the reason that people can come back in the NBA is because it's so much talent on both sides that no <laughs> to say man they, they don't come back because of turnovers <laughs> they come back because they have superstar players on both sides who can make buckets whenever you need it now, a team can be down 12 with a minute left in the NBA and they can still come back and win the game because if you don't play well for the entirety of the game you are liable to lose no matter how much time is left what can be more exciting than that the same thing can be said for the college game no matter because I, of turnovers it's not because of turnovers so they don't turn the ball over in the NBA. They don't turn the ball over in the NBA. It's not as likely for them to turn the ball over at the end of the game. You do that is see, not true. You do see people like uh, Kevin Durant, and you know he'll get to the end of the game and turn the ball over sometimes. That's not because he's not really a ball handler like that. You you may see it sometimes, but that's not typically the reason people lose NBA games. It's because it's so much talent on the other end that they can always come back. You are certainly entitled to your opinion, although your opinion is complete. Completely, completely skewed, man. Um, I don't know what game you're watching. College players fashion their games after NBA players. They're just not as skilled as some of the NBA players. Exactly. And that's why the game is not better at that level. I, just no, no. Yourself. Can I finish? I mean, I'll let you talk, but can I finish? <laughs> so the NBA, I'm, I watched two NBA games as, as we're doing this podcast. I'm watching the Charlotte Hornets play the New York Knicks, and I'm watching the Cleveland Cavaliers play the Indiana Pacers. I've been watching missed free throws, turnovers, players don't box out, players not getting back on defense. I mean, that happens on both levels, man. Like, please don't bash college basketball just to big up the NBA, man. I mean, because college basketball is a beautiful thing. It's a one-and-done deal in the NCAA tournament. If you hear Luther, then the party's over. There's no Luther in the NBA. They don't need Luther in the NBA. And to... To go off of your point, you've been seeing turnovers and missed free throws and all that. You know why? You you know why you've been seeing that? Do you know why you've been seeing that? Why is that? Because these players are coming to the NBA after one year of experience in college. That carries over into the NBA and is is losing a lot of the skill. It's being watered down by these players no, who sir. are not ready to be in the NBA. Excuse me, sir. It, it's watering down the game. Excuse it's killing me. the game I love. Excuse me, sir. The Cleveland Cavaliers don't have anyone in their 10-man rotation that is, you know, that that is not an NBA veteran. The Indiana Pacers don't have anyone except for one player in their ten man rotation that's not a veteran. The Charlotte Hornets don't have anyone in their ten man rotation. These are all veterans of the NBA. This it's basketball. Players are going to turn the ball over. Like players are going to miss free throws. Coaches are going to make mistakes. Like this is ha- this happens on all levels. The NBA is a three point shooting contest. And pick and roll contest. That's what the NBA is. I mean, you know, it's just two different types of basketball being played. No, not one is better than the other one. In my humble, you have your humble. I have my humble. But I'm not going to let you sit here and disrespect the game that I love. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. The two best players for the Cleveland Cavaliers 
How much time did they spend in college? They didn't spend any time in college. A total of one year. And Kyrie Irving didn't even play a full season. But LeBron so James is players. LeBron James is 31 years old. Kyrie Irving is 26. I mean, I they're, they're, not, they're veterans. I understand that. But that doesn't take away the time that they spent in college. A place where you can build on your fundamentals. A place where you can uh, learn the game from, from great coaches. Like, Kyrie Irving could have soaked up so much information from the nose. I mean, from Coach K, that it's it's ridiculous, man. But like Kyrie's a multiple ti- a multiple time All Star. Like, he is, he is. But just him and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of other players in the NBA, they didn't get the fundamentals that they would have got if they would have been in college longer. I'm telling you, look at Steph Curry. Steph Curry does a lot of amazing things, but he spent a lot of time in college getting the fundamentals. He knows the game. He can see things before they happen. He's like a jack. 